Now, here's a weird discovery. Leaving deceased flies on your windowsill might have a weird effect on other flies. Scientists have found out that when fruit flies spot the lifeless bodies of their fellow flies, their lifespan gets shorter. These fruit flies start acting introverted, lose body fat, and age faster. This leads to an early demise. Researchers have figured out why this happens. Turns out, two types of neurons in fruit flies get revved up when they see their buddies, and this extra activity speeds up their aging process. They've found that serotonin plays an important role here. When scientists show live flies the bodies of others, they observe which parts of the flies' brains light up. The researchers think that understanding how this fatality perception affects the fly's behavior and bodies could teach us about similar experiences in other animals, even humans. Flute fly brains are quite different from ours, but scientists dream of using this knowledge to understand how our brains and the aging process work. Now, aging is complicated. It's influenced by genes and the world around us. While we know that what we see and experience can influence the process of aging, the details are still a bit fuzzy. Here's where fruit flies come in. Earlier, the team found that when fruit flies spotted lifeless ones, they aged quickly. It turns out that this whole perception of life's mortality concept depends on a special serotonin receptor. Now, in their latest study, they spill the beans on how it all works. They've done some experiments with fruit flies, finding that a specific bunch of neurons is the brainy culprit. When exposed to lifeless flies, they lit up a part of the fly's brain called the ellipsoid body. Two types of neurons, R2 and R4, are like supervillains, causing the aging effect. A certain serotonin receptor is also the key player here. When these neurons were artificially kicked into gear, the fruit fly's lifespans dropped, even without them seeing any remains of their friends. By studying a specific group of these brain cells, the scientists found they could make even the flies that weren't living with their buddies kick the bucket sooner. The authors say that other animals, including us humans, go through some changes in their bodies when they're around their unliving pals. Figuring out how this works in fruit flies might give researchers the lowdown on the brain stuff behind these reactions. The flies might have had shorter lives because they were in a bit of a downer mood after hanging out with their deceased pals. Meanwhile, hummingbirds can fly backwards, and they're the only birds that can do that. It's not just backward, though. These little acrobats can flip upside down, too. Their secret lies in their wing setup. A nifty ball and socket joint, also known as a rotator cuff, gives their wings a wide range of moves. This unique feature lets them groove in a figure-eight motion, perfect for hovering in one spot or breezing backwards. Now, you might think you've seen other birds pulling off the backward trick, too. But it's often just the wind playing tricks on your eyes. Some birds, like warblers, egrets, and herons, might briefly go in reverse as a defensive move against pesky rivals or predators. But truth be told, their wings aren't built for extended backward flights. Hummingbirds bother with this backward hustle because it's necessary for them. These tiny wonders survive on a menu of berries, insects like ants and beetles, and, most importantly, nectar. Nectar not only fuels their speedy metabolism, but also keeps them hydrated. Flying backwards is like their VIP pass to a buffet of blossoms. It lets them move effortlessly between flowers, slurping nectar faster than if they were stuck flying only in the forward lane like other birds. Starfish are the ultimate regeneration champs. They have a superpower. They can grow back their own arms. It sometimes happens when they tangle with predators. They can even ditch their arm for a quick escape. It takes months, sometimes even years, for those arms to fully grow back. So it's not like losing an arm is a casual thing for these underwater creatures. But if the chopped-off arm stays unharmed, it doesn't just heal. It actually regenerates into a whole new starfish. A natural clone party is happening down there. This sounds super clever, but uh, starfish don't have brains. Literally, they don't have a brain or blood. But that doesn't stop them from regenerating in the deep sea. Instead of blood, they pump seawater through their bodies, delivering the goods they need to keep things running smoothly. No need for a fancy blood system. 
And since the ocean is filled with water, they're set for life. So even though starfish might seem like they're lacking in the brain power department, they've got these nifty survival tricks up their sleeves. All five of them. Another unusual fact is about reindeer. Their eyes turn blue during the winter months. You've probably heard about Rudolph's famous red nose, but it might have been his shining blue eyes stealing the show. A recent study suggests that reindeer, like Rudolph, sport these unique blue eyes that light up in a dark Arctic winter. It helps these animals find food. These hooved fellas have a stellar vision system, unlike other mammals. Animals like cats and deer have a cool eye feature, which sets reindeer apart is that their eyes glow golden in the summer and switch to a vibrant blue in the winter. Scientists are looking into this eye color mystery and another quirky trait. Reindeer can see in ultraviolet light. Typically, this light-boosting tissue is found in creatures that roam in the dark. But reindeer are out and about in broad daylight. Eventually, researchers came up with a theory. The idea is that reindeer vision evolved to ace the dark winters by helping them spot their favorite grub, a type of lichen fondly known as reindeer moss. Researchers did their detective work in the Scottish Highlands, home to Britain's only reindeer herd. The place is teeming with over 1,500 species of lichen. And guess what reindeers love to munch on? Yep, you got it, they're reindeer moss. So Rudolph might owe his fame to more than just a red nose. Those dazzling blue eyes are crucial in helping the gang find their munchies during the cold winter months. Meanwhile, crabs have a unique way of savoring their food. Sure, they have taste buds in their mouths, but they also rock chemoreceptors on their antenna and feet. These are special nerve cells. That's how these crustaceans sniff out and enjoy their grub. Speaking of quirky animal habits, Prairie dogs deserve our attention, too. They're all about territory, and guess how they check out if a fellow prairie dog is in their social gang? They do a thing called a greet kiss, where they touch their teeth together. If the guest isn't welcome, it can lead to a full-on doggy brawl. So you just can't drop a prairie dog into any random field with his pals. Then these fantastical beings are known as odontocetes, or toothed whales. They're not typical. Nope, they just have one tooth. Plus, it's not in their mouths. In the form of a big tusk, it sticks out of their faces. These animals are not into chewing. They slurp up their food whole. Now, let's talk about the sweaty hippos. This one might give you a startle. These big creatures feel the heat just like we do. But their sweat isn't your usual clear liquid. It's dark and crimson red. This blood sweat starts off clear, but once it hits the ear, it does a quick chemical switch and gets this eerie red shade. It turns out that this particular hippo slime is like a built-in sunscreen. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.